I have been daily driving Linux for more than 3 years already. From browsing the internet, watching movies, writing, recording and editing my videos, down to a bit of competitive gaming wherever possible, I use my Linux desktop for essentially everything. However, I'm an IT wizard, so of course it can be expected that I can fix many of the issues that so many users, especially newcomers, identify when using Linux. But do I even have to? What are the challenges that I ran into the past couple of years? Did I rely on other operating systems like Windows? And what do you need to know about Linux to have a smooth experience? All of this and more in today's video. This video was made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to participate in selecting new video topics, see what's going on behind the scenes and gain access to various tips and tricks, then please make sure to check out the join button or the link in the video description down below. So Linux, an operating system experience that I still find so much more appealing than Windows. And funny enough, I didn't really adjust much. I've personally always been a fan of the GNOME desktop environment. Initially because it was just different from Windows and just seemed interesting to me. But once I started using the workspace functionality, got used to the top bar and especially the hotkeys, I immediately felt my productivity go up. The animations, which many find unnecessary, keep me engaged with my desktop, since everything is more dynamic, gives the desktop a certain pace, and since I like GNOME's Lipid Vita design in general, personal opinion of course, it just feels right to use it. Now initially I started out on Debian, but with all of the improvements that GNOME released over the years, I switched it to Fedora, which is basically always up to date. But anyway, let's circle back to the beginning. The things that worked, the things that didn't, and how I fixed them. The first thing after all the initial stuff, like trying out a web browser and the default programs, was of course gaming. However, while Linux worked fine out of the box for those things, I knew that if I wanted performance out of my Nvidia GPU, which I still had in my system back then, I'm gonna need a proprietary driver, since Novu, the open source alternative, wasn't really capable yet to handle any sort of demanding tasks. First mistake, while I knew from my lectures and research that I should use the non-free Debian repositories, I still installed the latest version from the NVIDIA website, which did work, but not for Flatback applications, since their driver wasn't updated yet. On Fedora, however, I learned from that experience and used the Fedora native one, which back then was available in the GNOME software store. For a time it wasn't, that's why I'm telling you this. Anyway, I installed the NVIDIA drivers that are best suited for my distro and it worked fine after that. On Debian, I did the typical head on over to the Steam website and download the dev file, install it and play some Linux native games like Half-Life 2, Portal 2 and CSGO. On Fedora, I just used the out of the box setup that is available in the software store. I also activated Proton and back then loaded third party games launchers like Ubisoft Connect and their setup tools by adding them as a non-Steam game. And that just worked as well, despite being a bit clunky, so I switched to Lutris for those apps in particular. Ubisoft Connect, Origin and the Rockstar Games Launcher could all be installed, but after some time, something in there broke and none of them would launch anymore. I didn't really investigate why, but this seems to be an issue that is quite more frequent than I initially thought. No matter, I switched to bottles to get more granular control over each compatibility layer environment, and it hasn't disappointed me yet. Discord, back then, was just a click away from installing once I set up Flatpaks. Yeah, they weren't always supported out of the box. However, I did experience the screen sharing issue on the newer Wayland protocol myself, which is why for a time I switched back to X11. As for the rest of my applications, for most, I didn't really experience any issues whatsoever. I never used Photoshop or Adobe Premiere and have always been relying on GIMP, OBS and DaVinci Resolve to make my videos, which all have native Linux ports. GIMP was essentially install and it was good to go. DaVinci Resolve, however, was… interesting. On my NVIDIA GPU, both on Debian and Fedora, it was just as easy as executing the install script and it worked. Except that the MP4 files that I recorded with OBS just wouldn't load. Why? Well, as it turns out, the license for the industry standard codec H.264, which is used in those files, is usually covered by the operating system. Since Linux is free and open source, it's not so simple. And since DaVinci Resolve is an enterprise-grade tool, they don't rely on third parties to integrate them. The Studio Edition, however, does support it, and it is what I ended up buying. Though to be fair, this wasn't the main reason, as I also wanted to gain access to all of the other templates and advanced features. 
The still missing AAC codec for audio was then easily fixable by just recording everything with PCM. And I also do the same if I ever needed to download YouTube videos. With the switch to AMD and also later versions of the Fedora desktop, DaVinci Resolve became notorious to install however. From included dependencies that you need to move so that it uses your system once, to the ROCM package breaking a couple of times after updates. It just was a mess to get a stable experience. My solution? Utilize DistroBox and the container to install DaVinci Resolve on an older release of Fedora that didn't fuss as much and keep it that way. And on AMD it worked really well. In fact I have been using it that way for over two years. On my new Tuxedo laptop however, I did install it natively again though, since Fedora's update cycle of crucial tools like DistroBox, Podman and the Nvidia driver made it very unreliable to get it working. But with the native installation it has been rock solid otherwise so far. So basically if you have an AMD GPU then use DistroBox, if you have an Nvidia GPU then install it natively. Anyway, DaVinci Resolve was by far the most difficult thing that I had to solve. Otherwise I could just use Linux without any trouble whatsoever. I rely on Linux native editor tools and if I need collaboration the online version of Microsoft Office. I have my browsers, my recording tools and my editing tool that has not required any manual fixing in a long time. I can paint you a picture of how it's like to set up a new Fedora installation so that you know on what you actually need to know about Linux in the year 2025. First I create a bootable USB stick. Quite straightforward if you follow the Fedora instructions in particular. You boot it by changing the UEFI boot order or a dedicated key. If it fails, it tells you something about secure boot, so either deactivate it or set it to a different value if your PC already comes with this new Microsoft only setting. Once it's up, quickly go through the installer, which is just click click click, you reboot and are inside Linux. You make it for the setup guide and are done with the installation. Then you open up the software store, check for updates and if there are none, proceed to install drivers and applications. For Nvidia you can use the available package, for AMD and Intel you don't really have to do anything. Then you install browsers, Discord, Steam, Gimp or whatever else you require and see what works and what doesn't. Best case, like for me, everything just works. And the worst case, you got some incompatible hardware or something that doesn't ship drivers in the default repositories. Only then do you need to start getting familiar with the command line. Specialized tools like DaVinci Resolve are the exception and technically we are trying to run it on an unsupported system anyway. Though this is mostly Blackmagic's fault since they could easily distribute it differently. As a flatback for example or like Godot as an app image. I do not need the command line to update my system unless you want to update only certain packages. I do not need the command line to install most applications unless someone officially tells you to do so. And I do not need the command line to fix issues unless you have unsupported hardware. Some people ask me if they should be afraid to run Linux productively in case it won't boot up after an update. But to be honest I only had such an issue once and it was on Debian testing almost 3 years ago. I really would like to tell you that I do manual fixing all the time. But from my personal experiences, also with a much bigger sample rate like laptops, desktops and even embedded systems, Linux has not really made much fuss as long as you stick to the mindset of how a new user would do this. I don't use the command line to install applications. And why should I on a graphical desktop that is meant for displaying graphical stuff? I want to be clear. My experience does not resemble everyone's and there are countless of examples on how things can go wrong. But I think that very often something gets messed up because users interact with the system too much. Installing audio drivers whereas none might be needed. Maybe overanalyzing errors during startup which don't even require fixing. Some maybe aren't but my experiences are proof that Linux can indeed be a rock solid experience and I'm not even on the most user friendliest distribution. Linux can be better than Windows, not for everyone, but for many. And that's where I leave it. So what do you think of my viewpoint and my personal experiences with Linux? What are some of the issues that you encountered personally and did you manage to fix them? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. 
I really hope that you've liked today's video. If you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I'll see you again really soon, but up until then, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.